Madam Presiding Officer, I, I beg to move the following motion, standing in my name. Be it resolved that in accordance with Section 221 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act, number 40 of 1996, this assembly stands dissolved with effect from the Friday, November the 11th, 2016. And Madam Presiding Officer, I just want to take the opportunity to read Section 221. The assembly shall continue for four years from the date of its first sitting after any primary election and shall then stand dissolved unless the assembly by resolution dissolved itself at an earlier date. In other words, Madam Presiding Officer, we are, I'm asking that this assembly take the option of dissolving itself before the uh, four year anniversary coming out of the primary election. And Madam Presiding Officer, as I stand here to move this motion, I want to take the opportunity to pay tribute to you and to the uh, previous presiding officer for the very efficient manner in which you've conducted the affairs. And I think all of us appreciate uh, the conduct of the assembly's business during your tenure and the tenure of, the, of your predecessor. And I think we should all come to And I want, to, I want to say thanks to my colleagues. And I want us to cast our minds back four years ago. We came to this house and uh, in effusive spirit, not recognizing the challenge. It was 12 mil, and there were 15 of us here with no opposition. And of course, there's one empty chair there. And I want us all to remember Mr. Hilton Sandy who, like me, has been serving this assembly for 16 years, and therefore we were But we had a challenge to preserve and even enhance the democracy. And there were people in Tobago who felt that we could not do it. And I want to commend all of us, because I think we did well in ensuring that the democracy was in fact preserved and that the democratic process was continuing and in fact I think it was enhanced during this period. Because I think we took the opportunity in the House to inform, we took the opportunity in the House to share our vision, to share our policies, to share our recommendations, even to share our failures and our challenges. And I think every single individual in this house has had many opportunities to share with the people of Tobago and to let the people of Tobago know what we're doing. But we did not confine the democratic process to the house. We had our meet the community meetings, which I think were, 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 were highly successful. We had opportunities as individual secretaries to meet the press, and by meeting the press, you met the people. And all of us would have gone and had our press conferences or after executive council press conferences. And unlike some press conferences, all press conferences were not stage managed. Everybody was there, and you were supposed to, and I think everybody answered any question that was asked, and we were able to again share with the people of Tobago. And then all of us, whether at the level of the divisions or the level of our electoral districts, in the case of the assemblymen, I think all of us would have ensured that we interface with the public and we must also be mindful of the informal communication. Uh, Tobago is a place where people like to eyeball you, meet you on the street, call you at all hours in the, in the day and the night. And I think we have responded. And I want to indicate that I am confident standing here after four years that contrary to the naysayers, we did not abuse the absolute trust placed in us by that 12 mil margin. And I want to give the people of Tobago the assurance that if that margin is retained, I have every confidence that the just as this time around, the trust will not be abused. 
So, Madam Presiding Officer, as we're on the topic of election, I just want to draw your attention to Section 22.2 of the Act 40 of 1996, which reads, the President, after consultation with the Prime Minister and Chief Secretary, shall fix the date of a prime election, which date shall not be earlier than the expiration of two months after the dissolution of the Assembly, no later than the expiration of three months after that dissolution. So I want to put Tobago on notice that somewhere between the 11th of January 2017 and the 11th of February 2017, according to the Tobago House of Assembly Act, there will be a primary election for the Tobago House of Assembly to be held in Tobago. And sometime within the next couple of weeks, I'll be advising the, the Prime Minister and the President of the dates that I would like to recommend for that primary election to be held. Over the years, I have not had any challenge from any prime minister or any president uh, to the date. Sometimes you discuss and they, you know their recommendation, but in the final analysis, they have always respected our, our decision. And uh, I, I therefore want to ask us, as the people in this house, and the people who belong to the People's National Movement. To bear in mind that we have a tradition to keep, and it has to do with how you campaign is how you govern. And I think one of the reasons why we were able to govern with a certain degree of integrity, and where even if people did not agree with what we would have done all the time, that there was a certain degree of respect for the institution and for those of us involved in managing the institution. And therefore, I urge all of us to ensure that the upcoming campaign, even if it is going to be intense, that it must not be vicious. And that we have to understand that after the campaign is finished, we have an island to run, we have a people to take care of, we have work to be done, and we have to do it together as Tobagonians. This house has given unanimous consent to 44 motions and one bill, the Constitution Amendment Tobago Self-Government Bill 2016. This House, Madam Presiding Officer, adopted the amendments to its standing orders to provide for less speaking time at plenary meetings and further agreed that no sitting of the assembly shall be held from the first week of July to the first week of September in any given year to allow for the legislature staff and assembly members an opportunity to take vacation. Madam Presiding Officer, this House adopted the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan for Tobago 2013 to 2017. And this policy document that focuses on sustainable development in Tobago is at the heart of diversification of the economy, preservation of the environment, and a better standard of living for its people. Madam Presiding Officer, on behalf of all of the members of the Tobago House of Assembly, 2001 to present, I would like to extend our deep appreciation to the Honorable Orville Delano London, Chief Secretary, for his leadership that steered the ship for four sessions of the Assembly developing the people of Tobago as he develops Tobagonians. This is his final ball in this final session, and he is going out, not out. His, his leadership provides us with a very useful platform to make extraordinary progress in the past decade in improving the quality of lives 
for the people of Tobago. Madam Pres Presiding Officer, his servant leadership continues to improve and increase the capacity of people to be able to cope with and take advantage of opportunities. Madam Presiding Officer, as a servant leader, the representative for Scarborough College Hall focuses primarily on the growth and well-being of people and the communities to which they belong. He shares power, puts the needs of others first, and helps people develop and perform as highly as possible. And so human resource development is an area in which he continues to place significant focus. Madam Presiding Officer, the Honorable Orville London, leader for Scarborough Calder Hall, joined the voices of APT James, Winston Murray, Anna Robinson, Hotoy Charles, and many others to chart for the resolution of the long-standing burning issue of self-government for the people of Tobago. He also called on citizens to engage in sober reflection and deep introspection on where we are both as individuals and as a nation. And Madam Presiding Officer, we must continue to strive for that harmony. That is what the leader has said, our Chief Secretary. He said that we must continue to strive for that harmony, which will ensure that we can collaborate meaningfully in the continued development of our island and our country. Madam Presiding Officer, we have made significant strides in protecting our island community and our people, especially our children. And now I need each and every one of you to ask yourself, are you better off than you were 16 years ago? Is it easier for you to go and buy things in the stores than it was 16 years ago? Is it easier to buy things in the grocery than it was 16 years ago? Is there more or less unemployment in Tobago than there was 16 years ago? Is Tobago as respected throughout the country, throughout the region, throughout the world as we were 16 years ago? And I'm presiding officer, I ask the question, do we feel that we are stronger than we were 16 years ago? And if your answer of all of these questions is yes, then the Chief Secretary has led us on course towards development status. As Tobagonians, we are strong and we are resilient. And when challenges strike, we pull together and we draw on what's best in our character, our optimism, our commitment to each other, our commitment to our values, and our respect for one another. And so we stand up, and we rebuild, and we recover, and we emerge stronger than before. That's who we are. And Madam Presiding Officer, it is against this background that we express our eternal gratitude and sincere appreciation on behalf of the people of Tobago for the sterling performance of the Honorable Orville London as Chief Secretary in the Tobago House of Assembly. I rise for the final, this final session to say goodbye to everyone. Um, as I would have stated, uh, in our press release that I will not 
be seeking nomination for or to contest the upcoming elections for my party, the People's National Movement, the greatest party in the Caribbean, in Trinidad and Tobago. Madam Presiding Officer, I would have contested the elections, uh, my first elections in 2000 and, uh, 2005, and uh, I would have won two, on two other occasions, in 2009 and 2013. I am therefore extremely happy to, uh, to serve the people of Tobago and specifically the people of my electoral district, Plymouth Golden Lane, which includes Bethesda and part of Lekoto. I am also happy that in my first attempt at elections for the Tobago House of Assembly, that I would have, that fortune would have favored the brave and was able to defeat the then heavy ruler on that first attempt. Madam Presiding Officer, I wish to thank you for conducting and controlling the business of Tobago, the Tobago people in this Tobago House of Assembly for the past months. I also want to wish, um, I also want to congratulate all the previous uh, presiding officers that I would have, um, that would have conducted the business of the house, Mrs. Anne Michelle Giff and uh, Mr. Kelvin Charles for their superb control also in conducting the affairs here. I also want to profusely thank the only Chief Secretary <laughs> with whom I, have the, I had the privilege of serving for the past 12 years. And uh, in this house and uh, in the Tobago House of Assembly, Madam Presiding Officer, I, want, I wish to say to you that the Honorable Chief Secretary, Mr. Orville London, I thank you, sir, for your guidance and wise counsel at all times throughout my 12 year stint. It would not be good for me to just sit and do not um, pay homage to, and pay, um, give thanks and appreciation for the stint that I had at the various divisions. Uh, what I must also say is that um, my first um, era of um, management was at, as an assistant secretary at the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, then secretary of the same division, and um, moved on to the Division of Settlements and Labor as secretary, and the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and Environment from 2013 to present as secretary. Uh, 
from those postage at the various divisions um, um, at DIPO, um, we would have done a lot of work there. Um, the building of community centers, the Boko integrated facilities, the bridges and, and uh, recreational facilities, and a lot of things that we would have um, put into the landscape of Tobago uh, for the people of Tobago. And uh, for that, I am very thankful and uh, feel a sign of great, um, uh, greatness in uh, achieving such a feat. At, at settlements, there were, um, we would have done, um, built houses there and um, start up the process for townhouses and, and the land preparation for, for, for land to the, to, uh, for the needy, for the people who um, would have applied. Um, in areas such as Corland and Bell Garden Adventure, and um, to name a few. I, it, at the Division of, of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing, and the Environment, Madam Presiding Officer, um, as I entered the, that division, I, um, the aim was to have food security for Tobago. However, it, it, it was started, many programs um, introduced, our farmers being involved, and um, I am hoping that the, my successor in that division will continue the drive towards food security for Tobago. In that division, we also had, um, we also had the, the privilege, I also had the privilege of um, um, commissioning the state-of-the-art um, facilities, fishing facilities at Speyside, um, at Charlottesville, at Bell Garden, um, Lambeau, Pigeon Point, to name a few. However, Madam Presiding Officer, I must mention our move towards satisfying the, the, the environment that we all um, are living in. And uh, we, as a division that deals with the environment, we would have um, moved into satisfying the first three, the first three era by um, introducing um, a new, what you call an improved um, reforestation program that will treat with the environment throughout Tobago. Madam Presiding Officer, I cannot leave this political arena without publicly stating my support for full autonomy for this land of my birth. During my 12 years, I have encountered many situations and I've heard many comments made. Comments like that are to go to Trinidad again for approval. And uh, this, we are not, I am not, we are not looking for, for independence or seeking for independence. However, we are to be able to make decisions here that are binding and in the interest of the, the people of Tobago. Madam Presiding Officer, before I take my seat, I want to thank all the members of staff of the various divisions that would have supported me along the way. They have been very, had been very good um, supporting agents to the move of developing uh, a Tobago 
for to begonians now and for future generations for the purpose of clarification i think there's some concern among tobegonians as to whether as somebody say the assembly closed up <laughs> i want to give the assurance that the assembly has not closed down and will not close down tomorrow. What is happening is that this particular aspect of the plenary sessions in the House and communicating with the people of Tobago from this place, that has come to an end and the House is dissolved until the next session starts. But I want the people of Tobago to recognize a number of things. One that the Executive Council, according to the Act, has the authority to conduct the business of the Assembly and to take decisions on behalf of the Assembly that we, so that in no way would the work of the Tobago House of Assembly or the work of the people of, for the people of Tobago be negatively affected. Secondly, as I indicated, we will continue communicating with the people of Tobago explaining our plans, our policies, etc., at our weekly uh, press conferences, and of course, individual secretaries and assistant secretaries will be available to communicate. I expect that the public sessions, the, the public day sessions, I know at my office those public day sessions will continue, and I suspect that it will continue in all the other divisions, and also in electoral district offices. So I just want to reiterate, Madam Presiding Officer, that the Assembly has not shut down and work will continue and the people of Tobago will continue to be served. The 12 and 16 year veterans have gone or will go. And therefore, it is up to, to you all, you know, when your senior batsmen gone, those who were batting six, seven, and eight, you know, had to come up to the plate and be able to face the peace. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that there is a special responsibility that you all will have to really ensure that you demonstrate that you have benefited from the experience. And I want to say from a personal perspective that I will be observing and evaluating, possibly from some beach somewhere, <laughs> but I will be observing and evaluating how you all are performing. And I'm going to judge you on the basis that you're doing better in the next session than we did in this session. Because I'm not one of those people who believe that what you do is the zenith of what can be achieved. It's a platform. And therefore, you're starting with where we are and you have a responsibility to do better. And, and I'm charging all of you who return to this assembly to make those of us who are leaving proud. Honorable members, the question is, be it resolved that in accordance with section 22.1 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act 40 of 1996, this assembly stand dissolved with effect from Friday, November 11, 2016. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those against say nay. I think the ayes have it. The motion is therefore carried.